y'all and welcome back to the channel so as you know um our drama our hot mess our um when we are in a bind our um run to go to dad <laughs> whenever we're in some mess because <laughs> you can always learn something from his show um, Jerry Springer passed away um, today, and um, man, I'm just I'm shocked, I'm hurt because man, I, like we grow we grew up with Jerry Springer, like it's crazy, like us young people running around here looking at Jerry Springer, knowing we're not supposed to be looking at Jerry Springer, and you know he passed away. One of daytime's most craziest talk show hosts. Because Jerry was crazy. They have all those crazy people on his show. But um he was a good he was a good person. I, I like you guys. Oh. I'm sitting by the window and a butterfly literally just landed on the window. I didn't think butterflies can land on the window. But anyways, you guys, I just want to say rest in paradise. Jerry and uh, it's crazy. So this is kind of like you know, I told you guys before that I was gonna tell y'all about what happened at my job because I was working at one location. If you didn't guys didn't know, I, I am a manager at a restaurant. Um, and it's not like a big restaurant or anything like that, but um, it's like popular. And I'm not gonna say the name because I don't want to disclose, you know that prior part of my life um so while while we talking about my job i will be eating some jack in a box um i got a bacon um and egg cheese which i'm not supposed to have but and then some hash brown um so this will be kind of like a little mutt bang i didn't set it on my thumb but that's okay um, so yeah, um, my job in December, the location that I was working at, it, um, closed down. Um, me and another lady had to go to two different locations, like all the time, but now we just go to one location because of what I'm about to tell you. I'm going to tell you just because I feel some type of way. Um, so, um, there's one location that we go to. The people there, I don't know, to themselves and stuff like that. But you know how when you walk into a place... I don't care who you are. You can just be there to help temporarily. Uh, this could be a summer job. People think that you are trying to steal their pay. Or take their hours. Oh, I have a high seat. So... We had already let it be known that we're not there to see your pay. We're still getting paid our regular hours that we worked from the previous location that closed down. So our original location. So that was already set in stone that we would lose no benefits. We would lose no pay. And that we're just going to two different stores. Basically to um, get 30 hours at one store and 30 hours at the other store. So I put in mostly almost 70 hours. Um, and sometimes I put in like, I put in like 65 to 70 hours. Um, and so, um, the store that we was going to, um, we was only there two days. And then the other one, we we're just there like almost a whole week, you know, and so, long story short.
there's a girl and a boy that works there. There's sisters and brothers. Um, me personally, at a job, I feel that relatives should never work with relatives. But girlfriend and boyfriend should never work with each other. None of that. It should be just like a clean slate. You don't know this person, blah, blah, blah. So the thing with them is that they lied when they did our application. They lied and said that their name was two do two totally different names. But they do have the same last name. But he just used his girlfriend's last name. So anyways, we go the other day. Or before this, when we started going to this location, we was always noticing the girl would bring her kids. I mean, if you don't have, you know, enough money for daycare, you can always sign them up for like um, the the Health Start program and put your kids in daycare that way. Free state would pay for it. We're not comfortable with that. Maybe ask a friend or a relative that you trust and know that they won't hurt or harm your kids. But if you don't have any type of source, I can understand like a couple of days. Um, but like where we work at, the kids will normally be in the back. Her kids are sitting out in the front. We have our customers. Um, and the kids are running behind the line. Remind you, we have ovens and um, like heater, warmer heaters. So just think your child running behind a restaurant line where we're fixing food. And the kid gets burnt. So I think she got mad at me because, simple fact, I told her that her kid was behind the line. Um, I have, sorry guys, I have a 10 year old. And I'll be damned if my 10 year old comes to my job. He's 10 and he, he, he knows better. And if he was younger, still, I'll be damned if he run behind the line where I work at. Um, and it shows me that she's not teaching her kids how to be respectful and how to sit down and be quiet. Now, remind you, these kids are six, eight, and I think the oldest is 10. Um, and I think she has a younger one, and he's like, she's like three. But she is very calm. She sits down. She doesn't do anything, but she does um, intimidate her brothers. Um, I feel sorry for her oldest son because every time the youngest kids get into something or do something, she literally at work, like hit her, her son, whole son upside the head. Me personally, I don't want to get into nobody's business. I don't want to um tell a person how to take you know take care of their kids. But I know I'm wrong when I see wrong. And that was wrong. She also is fooling around with a police guy that is a security up at the school. And he's married and has two kids as well. Um, and workplaces for our customers to come in and enjoy themselves to eat, to, you know, be with their friends and talk to us too as well. And sometimes we do go out and sit with the customers and chit chat, but we also know to get up and keep doing our work. Um, so the officer comes in and he's all over her. She's all over him. I'm thinking one day she went in the bathroom with the little boy. She went into the bathroom with the man. Y'all already know they he hit it and he left um in a public bathroom. Like I like there's nothing wrong with if you're a husband and wife and y'all just wanna, you know, spice it up and you know, you know, you know, but just just some random character that you barely even know, um, that's married and you're 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 at work with all this this drama this excuse me this nonsense and you can't take your relationship outside of the job because 
He stay in a whole house with his wife. He stay in a whole house with his kids. And y'all be looking at me like, how you know this? Because she, she was telling us everything. If somebody tell you something, you're going to listen. You don't have to necessarily be involved in that drama. And she was talking to the other lady about stuff like that. And I was just listening like, oh, girl, dang. Mm -mm, that's trifling. But anyway. So one day our door dasher came in to pick up an order. And um, she saw the man, the officer guy that the girl was talking to at the job. And she ran out. And this girl, she's one of those type of girls where she wants to be ghetto. She wants to be, she wants people to be scared of her. She want to talk all her talk. And she says she'll, you know, beat your ass and all this stuff. But in reality, if you was going to beat somebody's ass, trust me, honey, you would have jumped up on instant. So she's a fake, phony, ghetto chick. Okay. She claims she was born in some type of hood. What I don't know. But. And she talks so much smack. So let's fast forward. The boy, um, the boy, her brother, he doesn't speak to people. He doesn't say good morning. He doesn't even, he just don't acknowledge that you're there. You can say good morning to him all day, all day, dumb day. And he doesn't even respond. He's very, very fake. And so, um. I don't know. Like his girlfriend came up one day and she just started talking to me. I said, how are you doing today? She said, well, I'm just so sick of phony people. Can I, can I talk to you? I'm like, I, I didn't have, I couldn't even tell. I was like, if, if, if it make you feel better, you know, you can. Um, and so, um, cause you just never know what people are going through, what their day is like and stuff like this. So maybe just talking to a, a total stranger and venting to a to total stranger, uh, will make your day. Um, and so I was just like, yeah, you can talk to me, but I still got to clean this dining room. Um, cause I said, nobody going to do it. So, um, we start talking and I see you. I see the boy, her boyfriend, the girl's brother, waving his hands like, don't you tell her, don't you tell her nothing. You know, he was saying just like that, don't you tell her nothing. But by that time, she had already told me everything. I think that he's mad because she told me that they're homeless and they sleep in cars and whenever they stay at his sister's house, she... He has to pay her $200 just to live there. Sorry, y'all. But, um. Uh, Like I said, you never know what people going through, what people, what people are facing. I wouldn't expect him, especially his sister's so ratchet, so ghetto. They live in fabulous and in a ghetto life, <laughs> a ghetto lifestyle. You want to say he will be living on the street, or living in the cars and stuff. Um, and so. The next day, I noticed that he was acting very, very, very strange, very funny. And I'm the type of person, if you tell me something, I'm going to never say it to nobody. Maybe he thought I said it to my coworker, the lady that me and her go to the store together. But I don't know that, like, the whole, most the whole week, they were acting funny, acting strange. And so, Monday, no, Tuesday, um, that's when all hell broke loose, long story short. So we're we're at the job. Now let me tell you, since we've been there, he smokes big time weed. So he'll go outside for an hour, hour and a half, smoking weed, come back in, he's laying on the 
the uh, cutting board. He's laying on the egg press, trying to make eggs. He's falling down on the floor. Boss at the job, the GM at the job, at this location, he's always outside smoking or drinking in his truck for hours. We don't see him, and when we do see him, he's messing up on the line. He's messing up orders, so we tell him, hey, just go ahead and go lay down or something. The girl, she has a little boyfriend there, a little security guard boyfriend there, um, and they're all hugged up, booed up. They go outside. Sometimes she get mad at her kids and put her kids outside in the car. It was hot outside. The kids was in the car, and I went out there and told her, hey, you need to roll down on windows. Ain't no Nobody's kids should be in a car with the windows up. You know, and I told the officer, I said, how, how dare you be an officer and not tell her to roll her window down for her kids? So he got mad. He was like, that's why I don't like black people. In reality, you are black. <laughs> he's the same color. Like, I'm lighter than him, but he's the same color. He's black. Like, like I said, I don't know what your black is, but my black, I have, I have, I'm mixed. I have things in me from heritage. Um, and so he just rolled his eyes at me. He walks off. So anyways, let's go back to Tuesday. What happened? We walk in, everybody gets ghost. The brother goes smoke his big weed. I see, I see my, my, my friend. She's, she's, the tea is brew. The tea is, is, is getting hot and she's brewing. She's brewing. And I see her getting mad. I see her getting frustrated. So I'm trying to talk her, um, positivity into her and motivate her to keep going we can get through this let's get through this and so um the girl comes in i think she's mad at somebody or maybe the guy done something again and she didn't know how to handle it so she didn't have nobody to talk to so um because my the co-worker that i work with we work together she normally talks to her and she tried to give her advice because she's been through a lot of rough time too as well so she they can kind of like talk to each other. I have too, but I won't tell her because I already know how what what, what type of messy drama queen she is. So, um, she comes in, she's mad, blah blah blah. The brother comes in, he's acting stupid. The general manager is drunk as hell, um, and he has like has like some bump things. I don't know if they were bed bugs or whatever. I don't know what the heck they were, but they his arms look nasty. And I told him like. You gonna have to get back. I have a whole ten year old son, and I have a life to live. I look. I don't know what the hell that is, you know. So he goes. He leaves. I guess he gets mad. He rolls too. So I'm sanitizing stuff down and stuff like that because I don't want. I don't want that. And so um, I'm over there fixing a the drink. The girl come back in. She was outside for another hour and a half. She come back in. She's like. Have anybody made these orders? Because we have DoorDash orders, we have in-house order, we have call-in orders, blah blah blah. So me and uh me and my coworker friend were basically doing everything for over six hours by ourselves. No help from them, nothing. And people are still coming in, calls are being made, DoorDash is coming in, orders ahead, app from the apps coming in. So we're we're maintaining, we're managing it. But then she's getting tired and she's getting aggravated. So um I go and I tell her, so I'll just make the orders. I make, I'll, I'll just make all the orders. You just take the, you know, take the orders from in house and um, cash out and cash in. So I'm not stressed because I can handle it. Um, I'm, ha I've handled a lot of, of like, as far as like me working in the restaurant industry, I've handled like over thousands of orders, food orders, and I'm, I'm, I'm very patient, very calm. So I see that they have a DoorDash over there. Nobody's making it. So the DoorDash orders are steady popping up. I'm okay over here. I'm done with my orders. I go over there to do the DoorDash orders. Then I see they have like three or four drinks. So I run over there to do the drink because I was like, oh gosh, I forgot to do the drinks. So as I'm doing the drink, she comes in. She said, I hope, I so hope that they're doing all these orders. Somebody going to be doing the drinks. Do you, uh, who's doing the door? And I, so I'm looking at her. She look at me. She shut up because I'm like, you know, she shuts up. And so her brother's standing there. He says something. I, I don't know what he says. And then she gets mad, blah, blah, blah. Fast forward. Um, my coworker friend, she said, let's go. Because I can't take this no more. I can't I can't deal with this. So, um, and, and I ride with her in the morning time. So we just kind of carpool just to save on like gas and stuff like that. So I just get my stuff. We, we As we're walking out, the sister, she said, 
the sister said, I'm tired of I'm tired of this shit. So she turned around and the let my coworker friend, she was just like, What did you say? She said, I'm tired of this shit. She said, Well, you know what? Since we've been here, I'm tired of this too as well. But she never cussed her out. She never said a bad word. Then she said she was gonna beat my coworker uh friend ass all up on her. Literally she can't breath. Then the boy looks at me and tells me that I will kill you and kill her too as well. I felt very threatened and I walked off. I left. And right now basically we're waiting on corporate to call us and yeah that's 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 my story so the final thought is when you got bougie ghetto people at your job just ignore them because at the end of the day we all have to make money around here um stay prayed up stay positive stay motivated and get your money sis like don't worry about nobody else worry about yourself because at the end you're gonna be living good and they're gonna be living the way that they live in ghetto hood and that's all. That's the final thought. Rest in peace, Jerry Springer.